NATO's Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center will soon be launched at a German military base in Weisbaden. The facility already hosts U.S. command making preparations for the deployment of long-range missiles aimed at countering Russia. Neza Visimaya Gazeta writes, citing new NATO Secretary General Mark Root. NATO decided to create the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center at the bloc's July summit. Washington is expected to hand all of its related powers over to the facility before the U.S. presidential election. The New York Times explains that the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine will continue operating even if Republican candidate Donald Trump, who said earlier that the U.S. needed to stop giving any aid to the Ukrainian army, is re-elected president. The new Secretary General of the North Atlantic Alliance believes that the temporary deployment of U.S. long-range missiles to Germany starting in 2026 will be an additional tool to counter Russia. U.S. President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz agreed on the missile deployment on the sidelines of the NATO summit in July. Root expects that U.S. long-range missiles will remain in Europe until Germany, France and some other European countries develop similar weapons of their own. However, it's hard to imagine this happening anytime soon because because other NATO countries have relatively small defense budgets compared to the U.S. While supporting Kiev, NATO is working with the U.S. on its own aggressive plans, which are aimed against Russia. This is what Mark Root's statements are about. Moscow has repeatedly said that it will give a tit-for-tat response to such actions. Russian Lieutenant General Yuri Netkachev, a military expert, pointed out, the analyst noted that Moscow had strategic allies and partners ready to support its armed forces. This is particularly evident from Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belosov's recent visit to China. NATO is definitely raising tensions by holding nuclear drills near Russia's border. Alexei Zuravlayov, deputy chairman of the Russian State Duma Committee on Defense, said, Notably, Finland, which maintained neutrality for over 50 years, is taking part in the exercise for the first time, he noted. This means that U.S. nuclear weapons will be brought to the country, which has never hosted them before. The thing to keep in mind is that these weapons are equipped with gliding modules and can be launched from NATO aircraft without crossing our border. That said, the threat of an attack from Finland will significantly increase, the lawmaker emphasized. In the Kursk region, Russian commanders defended themselves with dragon's teeth because of fears of a breakthrough of the AFU on the highway. However, such offense only complicated the movement of Russians, in particular the evacuation of the wounded and the flight from Ukrainian FPV drones. Russian Z blogger Sviatoslav Golikov wrote about this on Telegram to the philologist Ambush Channel, Focus reports. According to him, such barriers are installed Velikosoldatsky district in the Sudsa Kursk Highway, a dangerous area where enemy drones have already burned more than 50 vehicles, military and civilian. People are trying to slip through this section at high speeds. The other day, the dragon's teeth were secretly installed on the site. No alerts or warning signs. At speeds of 150 kilometers an hour, several cars flew in. There were dead and heavy casualties. Comrades working in the Sujan direction tore down these teeth to hell. But the next day, the situation repeated itself. Again, unexpected teeth, broken cars, several dead and several people in intensive care. The blogger was indignant. He said that such actions are similar not to the work of the leadership, but to Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups. You can't put a post on a site. It is stupidly smashed by drones. Alerts and warning signs could save you situationally, but now the dragon's teeth on the highway are not an option. The highway is actively working, and at the same time people are forced to fly along it. The blogger wrote, he was outraged that the losses from such barriers in this area are greater than from FPV drones. He also added that the other day a well-known volunteer crashed into the teeth there on his car. He was not injured, but he lost his car. In another Russian telegram channel, Troika, it was reported that 40 Russian soldiers had already died because of the dragon's teeth. At night in the Kursk region, an unknown SRG exposes the dragon's teeth in the rear on the evacuation routes along which cars rush from FPV drones at 150 kilometers an hour without any identification marks. More than 40 people died in just one day. The same number of people are injured. There are more accidents in an hour than FPV knocks out in a week. A seven-year-old boy died and six others were injured following an explosion at a house in the UK, police said on Wednesday. 
Northumbria Police Superintendent Darren Adams told reporters that a seven-year-old boy passed away at the scene, despite efforts by emergency services. Six others were taken to hospital, with varying injuries, he added. Adams said an investigation is ongoing to establish the cause of the explosion, and he appealed to anyone with information to contact the police. ...into Lebanon against the Lebanese militant group of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Hezbollah began firing rockets into Israel on October 8 in solidarity with the Palestinian militant group Hamas, following their surprise attack on southern Israel. Almost one year of low-level fighting has turned into all-out war and displaced some 1.2 million people in Lebanon. It is with great sadness that I stand in front of you today following the tragic death of a young child. As a result of the incident here in the early hours of this morning, a seven-year-old boy has sadly passed away. Despite the efforts of the emergency services, he tragically died at the scene. This is a truly devastating outcome. I have no doubt that the people of Elzig and Benwell and our wider region will want to join me in extending their thoughts and condolences to family and friends. The loss and pain they must be suffering is unimaginable. The boys' loved ones are being supported by specialist officers and we would ask that their privacy be respected at this time. I can confirm six people were taken to hospital with varying injuries. A number of people were also evacuated and are being supported by our colleagues from Newcastle City Council. We are working with our partners and the community to ensure all those who may have been in the area at the time are safe. An investigation is ongoing to establish how the explosion occurred. These inquiries are still at a very early stage and in the coming hours and days we will continue uh, to piece together what has happened so we can provide answers to the family as well as the wider community. We would appeal to anyone who has any information about what has happened to contact us.